Hi everyone, I'm Chris, and I'm from the Glasgow Zine Library in Govan Hill, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make your very own eight-page zine. Or, to put it more simply, I'm going to show you how to turn one of these into one of these. But what are zines, and why might you want to make one? Zines are typically self-published handmade booklets. The point of them is that they're cheap and anyone can make one. Traditionally, they've been used by groups to share information and build communities based on common interests outside of the mainstream. They can be about all kinds of topics, from art to pop culture, comics, educational, and even about making zines. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a simple eight page zine from a single sheet of paper. This is a really common and easy scene to make. So here's what you'll need. Grab your pyramid art pack. Mine's already a little bit beaten up because I was so keen to get in. I've got my colouring pencils, I've got some scissors, I've got a glue stick, and I've got a selection of uh, different colours of paper, different thicknesses, and uh, some card in there as well. One optional extra you might want are some collaging materials. I've got some old science magazines here, but you can use anything you've got lying around the house. Just make sure you've got permission to cut them up. You should also have a small handout that's going to represent uh, just what we're about to do. It's got a slightly different method of folding, but it doesn't matter, it ends up at the same place. So, taking a piece of paper from your pack, any one you like, although I do recommend taking a slightly thinner one because this will be the one that gets folded quite a lot and it's a bit easier. Fold your paper in half, like so. This is called a hamburger fold. Uh, you're just basically folding it straight down the middle so you have two even sides. That's your first fold. Secondly, you're going to want to unfold that again and then taking uh, it from a different axis, you're going to want to fold it lengthways in half. So again, just folding it in half, but long ways. This is called the hot dog fold. And yeah, it's about as delicious as it sounds. Taking each outside edge, fold each half in half again to the center line. Uh, you can see now that when we do that, the outside edges are meeting in the middle and you can start to see uh, what your eight page zine will look like. You can start to see the sort of basic shape of the panels. Okay, now it's time to make our first and only cut in the making of this scene. So, take your paper and your scissors and fold your zine uh, in half in the hamburger formation. So that's halfway uh, folded there. Now you can see that you've got a cross on either side. Uh, what you need to do is take your scissors and cut into that cross. Now you want to cut into it right into the centre of that cross and if you can be careful about it, no further and no shorter. Now, okay, you'll see here that when you open it back up, you have what appears to look a bit like a mouth. It's sort of just a sort of central hole or a slit in the centre of the zine. Um, this is where the magic happens. This is where a piece of paper really becomes a zine. So taking one side of the zine in each of your hands, I'm going to show you this a couple of times so you can get it. Um, you're, you're looking to push each side together until the slit basically opens up and um, it sort of folds itself out into various pages. So as you can see here, I'll just do that again for you. Uh, that is how it should look. So you're just pushing it together until it separates out into its own pages and then you just fold those around and fold them down, and there you are. So, now that we've made our basic zine template, it's time to think about what is this zine going to be about? What is the theme? As we've seen from our examples earlier, zines can really just be about anything you like, anything that's interesting you, anything that's grabbed your attention, any subject matter, and you're free to approach it from really any angle that you want. If you have an idea for something, uh, if you already are drawing a comic that you quite like, if you have a topic in mind, great, go on ahead, grab some pencils, grab the glue and get started. And maybe you need to have a little look through some of the collaging material and see if anything jumps out at you visually. Uh, I know I probably will have to. If you're really stuck, one of the best things you can do is talk to people about it. Maybe your brother or your sister or your mum or your dad have an idea about a topic that uh, might be quite interesting to do or maybe even to work on collaboratively. One of the best things about zines is uh, they do get better when you add more people and they do get better when, you, when, when there's things that can be shared with other people. So if you have an idea or even if you don't, 
don't be afraid, just jump on in and get started. I've been watching a lot of sci-fi, so when I was thinking about my own zine, I was thinking about fantastical futures and imaginary planets. Uh, luckily there was plenty in my collaging material uh, to use. Zines don't have to be perfect, in fact they often work better when they're just used as a quick way of expressing an idea or of, of testing something out. So I try to let uh, what's in front of me sort of guide uh, what I was doing and as I was looking more through the magazines I was finding that there might be a sort of narrative that could go through my zine, something I might not have really thought about talking about. I also kind of thought about the imperfections I could use. Uh, for instance, there were a few chunks missing from uh, various pictures I was, I was thinking about using. And uh, sometimes it's important to just sort of let the material that's in front of you uh, guide you, repurpose it. Think about uh, creative ways of adapting what's in, what you've got. Think about other materials you could use. I was uh, tr temp tracing templates around uh, cups and saucers so I could get the sort of effects that I want. Have a think about with the composition, what is it you're putting in your zine? There is no right or wrong way to really make one. This is something that could really just be for you. You don't have to show anyone this. You don't have to tell anyone what your zine was about. You don't have to explain it. You don't have to receive feedback on it. You are just making something for the joy of making it. You are experimenting. You are trying something out. And this is a great opportunity to sort of to sort of do that as well in terms of how you're making it. As you can see, I'm no great drawer. I'm not a particularly good illustrator, but I do know exactly sort of visually what I like, and I know how to sort of combine elements uh, on a page. And uh, I, that was something quite fun for me to do. Think about how to incorporate writing. Some zines are all writing. Some zines have absolutely no writing, no explanation, not even a title. Um, it's just depending on how the person has chosen to make. What they've made. In this instance I'm trying to sort of experiment with every single thing. I've got my collaging, I've got my drawing, I've got my writing. Have a look at the other pieces of paper that you haven't used to actually make the zine. There's probably some interesting stuff here. I found two colours I quite liked and I thought I could probably make a sort of more centerpiece uh, planet for my imaginary planets. Um, you can see there I am repurposing certain things. I'm quite visually interested in quite circular things for this scene. I've got um, electrons operating as, as asteroids, I've got uh, bits I can draw around, I've got circular bits of machinery that I, I think might make quite good interesting uh, space junk. Something else you might want to consider while you're making all this is what to do with the back. A lot of zine makers like to use this as an opportunity to put something more of a centerpiece in their zine, something that's going to stand out and break the format of the individual pages. And that's exactly what I decided to do, make something that fills the whole back page of the zine. And there you have it, my finished scene. As you can see, I used a load of different techniques. I used everything in the art pack. Um, I probably made it in a couple of hours um, from start to finish. And there is the back page, of course. Something to unfold and stick on your wall, just like a poster. And that's it. That's how you make a basic eight page scene. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you found it enjoyable and I hope it's given you loads of cool ideas of how to add a different kind of creativity into your next project. If you're interested in continuing your zine making journey beyond this point, you might want to think about what you could put in your next zine. Or if you're feeling ambitious, you could have a look and research maybe into some of the different kinds of zines that are out there and the different styles of making them. There are absolutely loads of ways to put a zine together and we've only really just covered one type of method. Uh, what you might find when you look into it more is you might see different types of binding, different types of folding, stitches, staples, and all the kinds of materials that are associated with those sorts of things. And please, if you do manage to finish a zine based on this video and from the art pack provided by the Pyramid, please, we'd love to see it. So do get in touch with us at Glasgow Zine Library, and you can find us online or on social media because we really wanna see what everyone's been making. Uh, that's it from me today. Thank you so much again, and uh, best of luck with all your zines.